For sale. Baby shoes. Never worn. Or so goes Hemingway's famous six-word short story. What does Ernest Hemingway have to do with Dark Souls? Well, I think Dark Souls has a lot in common with that story, and we're going to get there in a moment. My name is Aaron, and you're watching The No Show. In this episode, we're going to examine how Dark Souls tells little personal stories. I recently asked my girlfriend if she preferred to watch me play The Last of Us or Dark Souls. She said the former because it was a game with characters, cutscenes, and an intriguing plot. Dark Souls seems to her to be just a game about rolling around. She had a point. From the perspective of an onlooker, the narrative appeal of Dark Souls might not be so obvious. The Souls series have few cutscenes, sparse dialogue, and little in the way of a traditional plot. Unlike The Last of Us, Dark Souls isn't really fun to watch for the sake of its story. Yet, Dark Souls' approach to storytelling is unique. It's engaging, particularly when compared to similar titles. Consider Skyrim, which released in 2011 along with the original Dark Souls. Skyrim has hours of dialogue and thousands of pages of written lore. Nearly any question you might have about the world, history, or people of Skyrim has a thorough and detailed answer. This lore and exposition isn't just there if you want it, it's also front and center. It's constantly being offered to you. Every NPC will tell you their backstory without provocation. Every Jarl will offer the history of their kingdom just as soon as you set foot in their court. Build Skyrim into the land it once was. Strong, self-reliant. Skyrim is a game that goes out of its way to fill you in on every last detail. Conversely, Dark Souls has maybe 10 minutes of spoken dialogue within the entire game. You're given little explanation regarding the state of the world, who anyone is, or what your goals are. The approach taken by Skyrim is to illuminate, while the approach of Dark Souls is to obfuscate. Brief item descriptions, occasional NPC dialogue, and environmental clues are really the only tools available for understanding in this game. The good ending only further exemplifies this intentional lack of direct exposition. That ending sees the player character engulfed in flame after a final battle, only to cut to black and roll the credits. No dialogue, no explanation, just fire and death. It would be reasonable to assume that people would be upset with an ending like this. Just think of the reaction that Mass Effect 3 inspired. Yet in place of outrage, we see the opposite. Dark Souls is revered. The game has inspired online communities, dedicated channels, PhD papers, and careers committed to mining the narrative depths hidden within. Players generally respond to Dark Souls in a personal way. Instead of outrage, we see adoration. But why? To answer that question, we have to look back at series creator Hideataka Miyazaki as a young child. In an interview with The Guardian, he described his childhood in Japan. His family was poor, and he had limited access to a small number of Western fantasy novels. Many of these were above his reading level, rendering entire passages indecipherable. Yet, being an imaginative young person, he skipped over those passages, allowing his imagination to fill in the blanks. He used what details he could read and the illustrations that he found in the book. In doing so, each book he read became his own personal version of that story. He felt as though he was co-writing the fiction along with the original author. When making video games, Miyazaki fondly recalled how much he enjoyed creating the story in his imagination along with the books. Naturally, he adopted this approach to narrative in the Souls games. He wanted to make the personal and collaborative process he'd experienced as a child part of his games. While Miyazaki discovered this on his own, this type of storytelling was championed by Ernest Hemingway. He called it iceberg theory and described it as such. If a writer of prose knows enough of what he is writing about, he may omit certain things that he knows, and the reader, if the writer is writing truly enough, will have a feeling of those things as strongly as though the writer had stated them. The dignity of movement of an iceberg is due to only one-eighth of it being above water. Remember that story from the beginning of the video? For sale. Baby shoes. Never worn. What does your mind think of when hearing those six words? The key with iceberg theory is to give the audience just enough detail to be able to fill in the rest themselves. With our imagination, we're able to flesh out complex narratives based on just a small number of clues. And the Souls games do this better than really any game I've ever seen. They are absolutely filled with rich little details, small stories just waiting for the player to discover and unravel. Why did this dragon die? When was this underground city flooded? Where did the inhabitants of An Orlando go? What is Sen's fortress protecting? Who killed all these people? In Dark Souls, every zone is a six-word story, 
and those zones are filled with many smaller tales, all placed for the player to notice, or not. These stories don't explain themselves, they rarely reveal all their intricacies, yet they paint evocative portraits. They encourage us to be archaeologists, constructing narratives based on the little detail we have available to us. By withholding the boring details, From Software is able to create lore that doesn't become tedious. Instead, it engages our sense of curiosity and wonder. It immerses us. In place of words on a page or expository dialogue, we experience the narrative of a Souls game directly through our own senses. This allows our experience to be personal, intimate, because the narrative is formed as much internally in us as it is on screen. Video games are uniquely positioned to explore narrative in new and unique ways, yet so much of what we see in gaming only imitates cinema or literature. Dark Souls demonstrates a template by which games can build rich and complex worlds populated with compelling characters in a way that complements their collaborative nature. Restrictive storytelling is interactive at the most fundamental level. It demands our imagination, it encourages exploration, and it rewards a creative mind and a keen eye. I want to see more games that take this approach to setting character and narrative. I want to see games that immerse me in their world by not giving me every boring detail. What do you think? Did Dark Souls' opaque storytelling draw you in or push you away? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. As I said, my name is Aaron and this has been The No Show. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for more. I want to shout out a fellow YouTuber, Oren Luke. We recently did a podcast and he was a wonderful guest. His YouTube channel is full of smart, thoughtful videos on games and storytelling. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll love his work. You can find a link to his podcast and YouTube channel in the doobly-doo. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.